Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing this picture pop out effect. Don't forget to hit that like button and, of course, hit share and subscribe as well. If you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is with my training course, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. For this picture pop-out effect, we'll be using this photograph right here. And you can get the download link for this on my download page. There's a link for that, of course, in the description. Everything else is here inside of Photoshop Elements. If you want to use your own picture for this, it helps to have some kind of a hopping or jumping kind of a pose on that. It just helps the effect. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. First, I'm going to close this one down, get that out of the way. There we go. Now on this, let's make a copy or a duplicate of the background. Right click where it says background and duplicate layer and choose OK. We're doing that in this instance because we're going to be changing this background to something else. We need to have our copy up there. Now on this copy, we need to make a selection of the girl to remove her from the background or at least put her on her own layer. And for that, let's just zoom in a bit here. I'll use the zoom control. We'll come in fairly tight. That's good enough, I think, right here. And then let's just grab, oh, any good selection tool. I'll use the quick selection tool right here. We'll use this one. And let me bring the size of that brush down a bit, about half, about 21 pixels. And let's just go through and make a quick selection this way. And if you get little spots like that thumb up here, just bring your size down and then get in there as well. There we are. I'll go over here and let's Get this, that looks pretty good. Get that bit of the hand right in there. We'll clean this all up with the Refine Edge tool. Now I'll scroll down. I'm just using the wheel on my mouse for the scroll down. And we'll continue on down. Just grabbing into this selection. Notice that I'm on the Add down here. It begins with the new selection right here. And once you let go of your mouse, it then switches automatically over to the Add selection, which is fine. Okay, let's go through and just get the rest. That looks good. All right, now let's go to Refine Edge. I normally use mine on this overlay mode. And then look for areas like right here where it's not quite exactly on the edge. We'll clean this up again once we get this over into the regular program again. But just go around the edge, look for any kind of problem, and do a little cleanup on that, like right in here. A little cleanup right there is pretty good into the hair, of course, right in here. There we go. And just work our way around. This works very good on hair. It's really good at doing hair. It's not so good right there. I kind of missed that, but we'll fix that. And right along the edge, I think here could use a little bit of help. That's better. And right in here and inside the fingers. That looks pretty good. Let's come over here now back to the Refine Edge and change this to New Layer with Layer Mask. Choose OK. Here's our new layer with the layer mask. If we hide the background, we can see there is our image. Now I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat on this just to help hide any little problem edges. And that's we'll be putting in a blue background. She's on blue right now. I'll put in a blue background. That will help to hide any little problems on those edges. It's a really useful trick to do to try to do a similar color, but a different look for your background that really helps any kind of edges. If I chose a background that was different than the blue, maybe like an orange background, then any little blue spill in here would really show up very strongly and it would take a lot more work to fix that. In this case, we can actually use a blue background and it's okay. Now right here, there's a little bit right here where the hair wasn't working. We can fix that on the layer mask, which is right here. and for that, let's just zoom in a bit. Again, there's our zoom tool. We'll zoom in on that. And let's come in. Now, black hides, white shows. My brush is too large. Let's set this at a very small brush size. That's pretty good. Change our color to white. And then come in here again, white shows and black hides. I'm just going to come up here and just find where that edge of the hair is. Looks like it right around in here. That's pretty good. If I wanted to, I could reselect this and try to use the refined edge again, but I think we'll be okay 
on that. Let's change over here to black and I'll come in and just come in kind of tight on that. And that little bit right here I think will just hide into our new background. Again, that's one of the reasons why I like, if possible, to change to a background color that's similar to the original color. It just really helps on these edges. It makes it much, much easier. Okay, back to fit screen again. So there is our girl jumping up here. Now don't change her position. Don't move her around because a trick will be using this background picture. If I move her, you'll then see the background. Let me just show you that real fast. Go to our move tool. So if I put her here, you can see the other girl in behind. You don't want to have that happen. So it's under our move. Keep her in that same position. Now I want to put in that kind of a fake frame right down here. Let's come down to the background copy layer. And then grabbing the polygonal lasso tool, I'm just going to use this to draw in that kind of a picture frame effect. So come down here someplace, click and then pull a line up here, and then come straight across. I'm going to angle it a bit this time, just, just for effect like that. And then come out here a little bit, a little lower, and then take it up to my starting point right there. You make just that little selection just like that. You can make any shape you want, really, but it has to be a four-sided shape. But you can play around with it. You can be real even on it, or you can be kind of offset like I am here. Whichever way works out fine. So we make our selection, and then in here, click on the Layer Mask button, and that puts that inside of that shape we just drew. Now, we need to have that exact same shape. Let's switch over to the Move tool right here. And then hold the Alt key down and click on the layer mask. That takes you inside of the layer mask right here. Now come down to the selection tools here and grab the magic wand and click inside of the white. I have my tolerance down here at 10, pretty low. Just click in the white and that remakes that selection for you. Now click where it says background and you're back outside, but you have that selected. Now make a new layer down here. This is underneath this layer. And let's just hide those two layers for a minute. There we go. So we have our clear layer here with that selection. Let's inverse our color so that white is in the foreground. Grab the paint bucket and click inside here to fill that with white. And you can then go ahead and deselect. So we now have a white shape that's exactly the same as this shape. What I want is to make this shape larger, but I want to keep my sharp corners on there. And that's easy to do. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut to bring up the control handles in here, that bounding box. And then down here, we have W and H. Make sure that constraint proportions is checked and then change either one of these to 105. They'll both change to match. That just increases the size by 105%. Now if I bring back that other layer, you see we now have a nice background outline in there. Let's now put a drop shadow onto this thing. And for that we'll put a layer style on that layer. So go up here to Layer, come down to Layer Style, Style Settings, and then Drop Shadow right here. Now for Drop Shadow, I want it pretty soft, I want it pretty far away. So here's the distance right there. I want it over on the right hand side, so let's just move this dial around. Looks like around 145 is pretty good in here, so put it over to this hand side. I'm going to change the size, which softens that edge out right there. You see how that the size softens the edge? Change that to 35. I want it out quite a ways. We're actually pretty good already, but I want it out, you know, down here somewhere. So I'm going to change the distance here to 214 out quite a ways as you can see and then the opacity you can leave that at 35 percent and she's okay we can now bring the girl back in again there we are so she's now hopping out of the picture now all we need is a new background in here and that's why we kept this layer here and made a copy of that because we'll be changing our background this time come down to graphics and in graphics Make sure you set up by type and backgrounds. And I'm almost at the bottom. There's the very bottom down here. So here's the top. It's way up here. If you pull the scroll bar down all the way down to the bottom, way down here I found one right there. It's called Travel Cruise. Just double click on that. There's the Travel Cruise picture. And that gives us that nice new 
interesting background on there. Now the nice thing about this again is that we have a blue color in here behind her. So any place where her, the edge is getting a little bit too blue, it just blends in with this new blue background. It makes that real easy. So you won't have to spend too much time on making that selection. If I chose a different background, we might see some of that blue from the original picture still showing in there. But with the new blue background, it just disappears. It just gets hidden in the other blue tint. So there you go. That is how to do that jumping out of a picture frame effect. Now we used a few simple techniques in here to get this real nice clean effect, but obviously we didn't look at anything else. I mean, there's so much here inside of Photoshop Elements that you can actually do, and we just scratched the surface with this. If you really want to learn how to use the whole program, not just the few things that I show here on YouTube in these videos, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. And it really is the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and share, and of course, subscribe as well. And also, if you have any questions or comments on this video, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I try to answer every single comment in the comments. If you're not sure about a particular step, go ahead and ask me, and I'll give you a nice description down there on how to solve that problem so you can then get this project done very quickly and very easily. Make sure you keep an eye on my channel. I do several videos every single week, mostly on Photoshop Elements. I am doing some videos on Tuesdays on Minecraft just for the fun of it, and I'll occasionally toss in some videos on Photoshop and CorelDRAW as well.